What is going on, guys? Sean Don coming back with the technical analysis. Here we have Owen Zyder. Uh, at least I think that's how it's pronounced. I'm not exactly sure. But either way, welcome to the first technical analysis of the coronavirus madness. Um, yeah, I don't know. Not much to say. Let's just get into it. It's been stressful times, so better just get to work. Keep things simple. So, one more time. Not too shabby, pretty standard three turn. Okay, so. Owen. Malone track and field. Good old Malone. He used to practice there a little bit uh, when I lived in Canton, Ohio, during the summer. Working and training there. Not technically with permission, but I was doing it. Uh, so, yeah, uh, in the wines, they look like they could be just much bigger. You know, your hands are pretty close to the body. You're not making very big circles with the hammer. The radius is pretty short. Um, I think if you get a little bit deeper into the hips and legs, like a little bit more athletic stance, you're kind of standing straight up, as you can see, like right here. Not much knee bend or anything like that. Um, facing the right pretty good head somewhere in between the right and zero 270 and zero but yeah so you can see hands are pretty down close to the body here um, hands are dropping elbow kind of pulling down left shoulder kind of pulling back a little bit um, I think you like I said they just make bigger wines so kind of think about making the path of the ball longer bigger circumference if that makes sense um, really reach your hands out when the hammer is in front of you maybe think about reaching back a little bit more when the hammer is behind you reach back towards 180 nice and long reach out in front of you nice and long around here and then reach out in front of you nice and long as the ball comes through zero and then make sure it gets nice and left too. Um, like I said, just kind of short, small winds. Big winds would help your connection maybe. And if it helps your connection, it'll help your throw. So um, because they're kind of short, like I said, hands are dropping down. Coming through on zero. Your hands drop and they lift. So you see hands are coming down and then hands are going up and kind of lifting around that left side and you can see your entire body kind of start to rise up with the hammer this left leg is essentially straight and then you come down with the hammer too as the hammer goes down you want it to be the opposite so in the entry I don't like to think about dropping but in the entry I want you to just think about kind of staying the same hip height if that makes sense don't rise up with the hammer but don't drop down but I guess if you were to pick one of the two, it would be better to drop down. But um, let the hammer go left. I think if your hands are up a little bit more, like I said, hands up and out, big circles. Let the hammer go left more. As you can see, as the hammer comes through zero, left shoulder is right here, and then it starts to shift back just a bit. So you're already kind of uh, predisposing yourself to that left side kind of pulling a little bit. You're coming off the heel, so... Um, it's okay, but uh, like I said, I think it could still be a little bit better. Letting the ha hammer go out left, letting it go free. Okay? Um, but yeah, the big thing is here to, is to not rise up with the hammer and then not drop down with the hammer. You're kind of doing the opposite of what you want to do. You want to drop when the hammer rises and rise when the hammer drops. Uh, you want to be against the ball, but also with the ball, which doesn't make much sense. Uh, but that's kind of how hammer throwing is. One giant paradox. Uh... So like I said, yeah, stay down, don't rise up with it. Because you rise up, you kind of catch a little bit late. Um, maybe try to keep your hips a little bit more square to the hammer. This right foot's a little bit turned ahead, as you can see. Uh, it's hard to tell because the hands and hammer are out of frame from the video. But uh, hammer's back somewhere before 270, and the right foot's turned to about uh, 300 degrees or so. Um, 
And then the same thing, you, you come down, you catch and sit with the hammer, and then your hands also drop with the hammer, losing a lot of energy uh, to the hammer, You're giving into it a lot, um, not very efficient. Pretty decent job turning with it, right knee turning into left knee, but then you can still see as the hammer comes through zero, the left heel comes down, this left shoulder actually does a decent job of staying where it needs to. So, better there. But then same thing. As soon as the heel comes down, you start to rise up with the hammer, and you stand it up straight. This right leg gets a little wide. And then same thing, you can see yourself kind of drop down with the hammer, giving to the hammer. And then once again, you catch a little bit later here at 270, right foot still turned ahead. And then you sink down with the hammer, sit that heel down, left side, pulls back a little bit more. You can see a little bit of the tension through your shoulders, try to really relax them, protract them forward. And then just looks a little tight and uncomfortable. Once again, a little bit more rising up with the hammer. And then you have the tendency to kind of try to step around and then same thing, you kind of come down with the hammer. And you see because you get wide, this left shoulder pulls back a little bit going into this final turn. And because of that, your center of mass is going to shift more over to this right side, which is why you see this left side kind of pull off the ground and disconnect before you come through on the finish. Um, another small comment regarding your right leg movement. Think about stepping towards the sector. Drive this hip towards the high point and step forward towards the sector. As you can see, once you get to about here, like things are fine, but then the next couple of frames, you see you start to try to step around. And because you try to step around, that kind of takes a little bit longer for your foot to get down. Whereas if you were to just step forwards and put your foot straight down, you'd save a couple of frames to catch a little bit earlier. So, um, yeah. Oh, and I think the biggest thing for you, like I said, is learning to uh, some would call it counter the hammer. I don't think that's the appropriate term, but that's the general terminology that pre people use. Um, counter it kind of implies like you need to actively move against the ball, which isn't necessarily the case. All you need to do is stay in the center, both front to back, left to right, and uh, top to bottom. If you stay in the center and resist the hammer forces, if it pulls you up and you resist it and stay in the same place, you're essentially technically pulling down, but you're matching the force. So it's, once again, semantics. Um, you need to stay at one level. So you shouldn't rise with the hammer and you shouldn't sit and drop with the hammer. If anything, you want to do the opposite. But I recommend just trying to stay the same level throughout the throw and... Um, work with the hammer yet also against it once again the paradox of hammer throwing so um like i said that's the big thing you can make your wines a little bit bigger keep your hands up and out and relax your shoulders a little bit more but the biggest thing is that you don't rise up with the hammer especially in the entry and then don't drop with the hammer especially in double support so every time you do that you're kind of losing force to the hammer rather than letting it build its own force um so yeah pretty straightforward at least in terms of saying it, uh, not so straightforward in terms of doing it, but that's, you know, you got time. This whole season has been postponed. You got a whole nother year before you got to throw the hammer in, in competition. So learn to counter, stay in the center. So, all right. Let me know if you have any questions. Like I said, should be pretty straightforward. Let me know if you need any help. If anyone else out there would like a technical analysis during this coronavirus madness, in case you need some coaching or some programming or something, let me know. I am here to help. Okay? Sean Don, man of the people. Happy to help you guys out. Thanks for watching. Until next time, maybe I will get my lazy butt off the couch and make a YouTube video soon here. All right. Peace out until next time.